from Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Hi, my name is Dr. Velma Clopton Apostle, and my show is coming up next. Stay tuned. Are you on, Doctor? Hello? Yes, I'm here. He's going to give us the cue, and then I'll go on and do an introduction, and then I'll introduce you, and we'll just dialogue. And feel, feel free very to let good. the Holy Yeah, feel free to let the Holy Spirit use you. Mm-hmm. Go so we'll agree. Go on, Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. God, we welcome you, glory. God, we thank you right now. God, we thank you for all of your peace. God, we thank you right now for going before us in Jesus' name and break us anointing on the minds and hearts of the people. God, we need revelation. We need that to open doors of heaven, God. Go, Apostle. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Good morning to some. This is your host, Dr. Velma Roseman Clopton, on uh, the set time of God's favor. Welcome again uh, to the new year. I know this is our second weekend into the, this wonderful new year of 2016, and we're just excited. One of the reasons why we want to get excited, because we want to come in agreement today um, in one accord to believe God that by the Spirit of God we're yoking up with one another because God wants us to push back the forces of the enemy. But I want to pray this day that we will not so much just focus on the enemy, but, you know, on the goodness of God. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. And one of the things the enemy will do is keep us focused on him, and, and God operates according to his word, and that is the word of faith. So as you set yourself in agreement to focus on the goodness of God and knowing that according to Psalms 23, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And also in Jeremiah 29, 11, we quote it very often, and that is God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us, and they're good and not evil. So we're going to begin this day, this program, off on the thoughts that God has towards us and we're going to believe today in agreement with the Holy Spirit that your mind right now will begin to set a precedent for the remainder of your life, and not just this year, but the course that we are going to believe that you're going to set be set on today is a course that will cause you to accelerate, no matter what it looks like on the right or on the left, that we have our goals set and that we know without any shadow of a doubt because of God sending his son, Jesus Christ. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe in your heart and you that God sent Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and that he came for you to show that love to you, if you would even right now at the beginning of this program, let's set things in order and believe God with me that God is calling you by name. Oh, yes, he is, Joseph. Yes, he is calling you by name. Um, I hear the name Anna, Annabelle, Anna. And uh, God is calling you. God's been working on you, Frank, for a long time. So right now, we're going to confess our sins and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our hearts and be our Lord and Savior. And if you confess that you have been a sinner, you've been in rebellion, you walked away from God, but you believe, according to Romans 10, 9, 10, in your heart that God sent Jesus to die for the forgiveness of your sin, to shed his precious blood, then you ask him right now, if you confess your sins and confess your rebellion and you're being um, not believing in God, being disobedient, that you now receive Jesus Christ by faith. Ask him, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. 
And if you believe with me today and you prayed that prayer, you are part of the family of God. And there's really no other way to be us to begin the new year. There's nothing else more um, important than first doing it God's way. And God's interested in souls. He, my, Jesus came into the earth and he did so many, many miracles, showed God's uh, love for us, showed miracles, showed his, the kingdom of God by healing the sick and setting at liberty to captives. But it is when he went to the cross, it's the cross that really reconciled us back to God through the shed blood because there had to be a lamb. There had to be a propitiation. There had to be someone that would take the place for our, you know, and take take the punishment for our sins. And that person had to be an unblemished lamb, had to be someone that was perfect. And Jesus was the only capable sacrifice that was able to do all that and more on the cross. So the cross was the necessary a uh, component of, of how we got reconciled back to God and particularly as Gentiles. Um all all people and that's what I always pray we would get as races of people. All people were alienated from God except the Jews. They were his chosen ones at that time. But now when we get born again we become sons of God. So we become favorite of God. We become, you know, part of the kingdom. So we become a part of this awesome uh, experience of being the children of Almighty God, being seated in heaven in places with Christ, being able to receive the blood of Jesus, which gives us mercy, shows us mercy and kindness, not because we deserve it, but because of God's mercy. So the Bible says, by grace and faith we are saved and not of ourselves. So we accept that by faith. I, I realize that I open up with the foundation of extending an invitation for you to be saved and for you to become a part of the family. And I want to congratulate you. And in any um, situation, our instructions are to encourage you to become a part of a Bible-believing church where you're going to grow spiritually, going to develop your gifts, going to come into a place of knowing who you are. So if you uh, receive Jesus Christ, Lord, and Savior, please write us and let us know, contact us. My email address is Dr. V R Velma V E L M A Clopton C L O P T O N at yahoo.com, or you may contact me through the Worship Center Network uh, Radio Network. So after that, I want to take the moment of silence, which has been our practice, and what we're going to believe God today for release of power and favor that you may accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Okay, so I wanted to remind myself this morning, kind of sometimes we get started and I uh, get away from, um, you know, that which I know that God would have us to do, and, and, and I don't want to get distracted or get in a hurry, and that's the reason why I'm kind of quietly flowing right now. I have awesome guests on the phone uh, that's going to be coming on, but I want to make sure I bring at the new year our foundational scripture, which comes out of Luke chapter 4, and it's um, regarding uh, Jesus uh, uh, said in, in um, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 is our foundational scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's in St. Luke uh, chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. And that's been our foundational scripture from uh, the point in which God spoke to me that it, this was his set time of favor, God's set time of favor. And many of us oftentimes uh, maybe look at that somewhat, you know, as a cliche, but the power of God you know, is set forth in the fact that he has spoken that this is his set time of favor. And God spoke to me when I was in visiting and said, this is my set time of favor, my, my people. And in particularly, he said he wanted to bring the African Americans into a place of preparation for participating in the end time glory of God. And how many of us know, I don't care who you are or what you are doing, all of us want to receive more of God's grace and favor. 
you can have all the money in the world but be headed to hell in a in a Learjet. Uh, so you could be on the highest mountain, and yet if you're without Christ Jesus, if you're without the favor, which God says in Ephesians 2, by grace through faith, you're saved and not of ourselves. Grace is favor. That grace is blessing. And so we want to encourage you to not consider the word grace simple, but let's believe God that is full of living power today. So I'm going to release upon you a prophet as a prophet of God and an apostle, the apostolic of grace and blessings of God. This is the season God is releasing the hand of his favor, the hand of his power. So if you're listening to me today and you feel that you're lacking in favor, then this is the day I want you to believe God with me and come in agreement if two shall agree. Um, it's asking God anything, it shall be done. So we declare, decree and declare that you are blessed with the favor of God, that you have favor with God and favor with man. So I have a couple of things I want to say before I engage our guest here. And um, on a couple of things, I'm going to endeavor um, in Genesis chapter 36, I believe it is, um, I wanted to share a couple of things quickly regarding Joseph. You know, there are times when you are favored. How many of you know, you know, if you're favored on your job, you're, the other employees don't necessarily, co-workers don't necessarily like you. If you're favored in your family, your brothers and sisters may not necessarily like you and be for you. And that was the case with Joseph. You know, the Bible says in Joseph, uh, Genesis third chapter 37, verse 34, uh, I mean, Genesis chapter 37 and verses, let's see, 3, 4, and 5, I'm going to read. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully of him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him even the more. I want to encourage you that during this time, just because God says to you that you're a favorite of him, that he loves you, and that God is going to cause things to go well in your life and, and work things in, in his perfect will for your destiny, it doesn't mean even your brethren, even your friends and people around you are going to think you're all that. They're not going to favor you the same way God favors you. Matter of fact, there's a sign on you that causes them to hate you, causes them to be jealous against you. But you have to begin to readjust your mind thinking, realign your thoughts and your heart to, to a, a determination that the will of God is the purpose God is favoring me. The will of God is what God has ordained for my life, and this is what he has favored me to do. So you get your mind and heart off of your haters and off the people that are jealous of you, off the people that feel that, you you know, we're not going to serve this or we're not going to do this or, or we're going to try to make it difficult for you. And that, that many a times is the case, but if you would uh, commit yourself to faith in God and believe in that whatever favor that you have, it's so that you would walk in dominion over your enemies. You would reign in the midst of your haters. You would free yourself from the jealousy and the haters and walk upright before the Lord. Walk in the power of God's might for your lives because, you know, when you realize that you have haters around you in your midst, you don't share your dreams with. Like Joseph went, like we all do prematurely oftentimes, we get excited about the dreams, we get excited about what God is saying, and then we begin to tell others that really hate you, others that are jealous of you, others that don't like you. You begin to tell them about your dream, and they plot in to try and oppress the dream, try and destroy you, but try to cause it to be sabotaged because of their envy. And because of Joseph's brother's envy, then Joseph was thrown into the pit. And if you're most of you know the story. Later he was sold uh, to the Egyptians, and later he went into Pharaoh's house. But uh, the point is that God still got him to his destiny, and the dream was still yet fulfilled. So though many a times we can get ourselves in trouble and we can sabotage our dreams, 
Yet if you get back on track, humble yourself before God because it was pride and so forth that Joseph probably ran and told his brother, see, yeah, look at me, see who I am. But there, the else, you cannot have an attitude of pride. That's one of the things in this season God is allowing us to deal with is humble ourselves, submit ourselves to God, free ourselves, and really realize anything you have, if it's if it's favor, it's from God. If it's grace, it's from God. If it's material goods, it's from God. So it, nothing is of ourselves. So today I want you to free yourself from some of those forces, and particularly internal forces. Most of the time it's not the outward forces that defeat us because the internal forces are what oftentimes will drive us and cause us to be propelled into realms of greatness. Why? Because you remain in faith in your heart and in your spirit. You remain in dominion because God says that uh, we are more than conquerors in him. We are, we will nothing will ever separate us from his love. So when you internalize the word of God and faith in God and you begin to forge forth in faith, in obedience to what he's called you to do, not giving attention to all the things that are around you, the haters, the this, the that, don't you begin to come into love of God. You become uh, into humbleness and and forgiveness, and you walk in the mindset of who you are in God. It's not, I, I, I have made it a point in my life. I don't try to boast in that I'm this and I'm that. I don't try to boast in what I have, I don't have. My boast is in the Lord. Make your boast in the Lord in this beginning of the new year. So as we get ready to, you know, shift gears, I want to give you a prophetic word that I believe the Lord has given me. And I pray that this word will begin to ignite you and to begin to shake some things off of you and to begin to cause you not to fret. The word I'm hearing is tell you to fret not yourself because of evildoers. We're going to have evildoers. You're going to have haters. You're going to have people that will try to sabotage and rain on your dreams and your parade. But I want you to be uh, filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. If you have not received the Holy Ghost, I pray right now that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Ghost will come upon you as God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in new tongues, that the baptism of the Holy Ghost will, with fire will come upon you and that you would begin to speak in an unknown language uh, uh, different from that, that you just your, your native language, and that you would allow God to begin to speak because speaking in, in a new language in tongues, because you will speak and communicate directly with God and Satan doesn't understand it, but also it provides strength, inner strength and power and, and grace for you to accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. One of the things the Lord said to me uh, in really one January 11th was the issues that we are facing in this country, and even in our own lives, they are great, but we must free ourselves from those issues by putting, uh, laying aside those weights and putting our faith in God. And so we must begin to, cons uh, to seek God like never before. And God is calling for a great army uh, to be forged amongst his covenant people on earth. And in this, God is going to cause us uh, to walk out of the ignorance that the enemy has tried to put up on us, the lack of knowledge of who he is, and we're going to embrace and engage in uh, the warfare with the weapons that God has given us. I want to declare today that wherever you are, that you become a part of a revolutionizing army, an army of people that God is raising up. I want to call forth prophets and say, prophets, arise, arise and come forth, and let's begin to agree with God and storm the heavens to block the forces of the enemy. God is going to be releasing unusual revelation of his grace in this hour, and he's going to cause the voice of the prophets, uh, who are his mouthpiece, to take the forefront, because without a vision, God's people, without a vision, people perish. And so if you do not have prophets speaking forth the mind and the will of God, releasing it in the earth, then you're going to have people walking in darkness and wandering and not really having a compass to follow. And so I want to call the prophets forth as part of my grace is to train up and develop the mouthpieces and voices of God, you're already called by God, but you want to come in agreement with others like Paul did Timothy and teach and train and to develop you. And so if you're interested in development in the prophetic, please contact me at D-R-V-E-L-M-A-C-L-O-P-T-O-N, Dr. Velma Clopton at yahoo.com. 
and you can uh, reach me through the radio station. I'm available, and God is, is certainly using me uh, in, in restoring the things that the enemy has tried to steal or oppress because God it still cares about you, his mouthpieces, and his prophets. So I'm calling you for today. I'm speaking healing over someone that's really been dealing with migraines and an oppression. I take authority of that spirit of, of migraine and oppression and fear. You fear fail. You fear losing a lot of things and even your marriage. Uh, but I come against that right now. And I declare in Jesus' name, every dead monkey that's been on your back, every demonic spirit that's come upon you, I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. Now, with that said, we are going to take a, um, a moment here to introduce my next guest. <clears throat> we, got a, we have a mandate to take back our country. Uh, we have a mandate to win, and we're going to stand together in this covenant. And so Dr. Jerusa Hilton out of Las Vegas, Nevada, is my guest. She's also, she has her own um, ministry, African Cry, and many other mighty works that God is doing through Dr. Jerusalem Hilton. But she also is on our team with the Voice of Freedom National and Intercontinental Movement as one of our national coordinators. So, Dr. Jerusalem, would you please introduce yourself, and we're going to inter- interact and, you know, how God uses you. But um, please feel free. Well, Well, good morning and to all the listeners, to you, doctor, and uh, thank you for having me on, as well as the pastor. Um, I'm just thankful, first of all, to have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour to us, the church. It's very crucial, as you know, Dr. Velma, that we have the ears to hear, that we're all on one accord, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so, if it's okay... I will share the part that God has given me to share with the listening audience. Okay, go ahead. Is that okay? Yes. All righty. First of all, you know, we can see a lot of uh, killings within our community with the male, with a lot of the men, you know, with law enforcement, and it's going on all over the world, even in third world countries. And one thing God has really put on my heart that it is because of the hour that we're in that the serpent was after the woman to beguile her seed. We can go from Genesis to Revelation and the beginning of creation to the end when the coming of the Lord. And so what God was showing me that the enemy knows that the hour is nigh and that the anointed one is going to come the same way he came. Most of us look up to the sky looking for the rapture, but he said he's coming the way he came. He came through the wound of a woman. And so shall it be in this hour. So we see our son being uh, killed uh, at the hand of law enforcement, which is still a plot. Also, in Genesis and Revelation 12 and 13 says, but the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. It is our job as women to come together in this hour to unite together, to get the strategies of the kingdom to bruise the head of the serpent, to save our children so they will have a future, and so we can move into the promised land. So with that said, God has also given me to unite Africa and African Americans together for the healing of the nation, uh, the lost tribe that was sold uh, into slavery here and abroad. So as you know, I'll be leaving again to Africa next month to deliver the same message that God has given me, that it is important that we move quickly Because we have spent 40 years in the wilderness as a people, it is time for us to go into the promised land. Reminds me of the scripture, Joshua 5 and 6, where the Israelites had moved about. And it says in that scripture, when the Israelites crushed 40 years, of, they were in the wilderness, 40 years wandering until the unbelieving generation died off, never stepping foot in the promised land. The land he commanded them to go in and take already, which is theirs. And so we, the children of Israel, the children of promise, I know a lot of people are going to question that, but we're the only people that have been through the hell that we've been through. We're the only people that are hated by all nations and tongues. We're the only people that have hung on a cross like Jesus did. We're the only people 
that are sought out, that every people are out to destroy us. Why? Because hidden in us is something that we don't even know. It is our identity, and our identity comes from the Father. And because our Father never told us who we were because of slavery, we still wonder. But if we will look in the Word of God, our identity is there. Our identity and the Father's Word is spoken to us, and it will bear witness in our womb, and it will leap just like it did in the, in the belly of Mary and Elizabeth. And so this hour, God is using you, Dr. Velma, and many others that I've spoken to begin to, to prepare the way like Moses for the children of Israel to come forth and to get in alignment with the call, whatever position it is, if it's with the women or a national call, but we need to all step up in this hour. If it's no more than sign your name to the petition, we need you to step up because numbers count, and we need to make these numbers count so we can get it to the president because we have only a certain amount of time to do this. If we miss this 40 years, it's going to be many more years, and I won't be here at that time, for another opportunity to move into the promised land. And so with that said, I know I said a lot. I hope you were able to digest it. Uh, may the Lord have a blessing to the word. No, thank you. And, and you, you focused on some things that we need to focus back on, Dr. Jerusalem, and that is the women. The place that the women have, especially as the woman, in bringing forth what God wants. So we're calling forth the mighty women of God of prayer, of intercession, of warring. And I need you to contact us at Dr. Velma Clopton at yahoo.com and email me if you're part of a prayer group or part of a prayer movement or prayer ministry as the woman of God say this is an earth and hour and I bind up that spirit that's a part of the jealousy and the enemy what we've had the Lord told me that calls people attention yeah. to some of the ills that have faced us. We, the enemy has tried to continually put upon us divisiveness, division, and offenses, and we will speaking in disunity, and he's constantly tried to use that to keep us from coming into this place of being a mighty people. Because when you go back to Genesis and God says the uh, woman shall bruise the serpent's head, that is the woman brings forth that that baby, that son, that that child, that uh, uh, nation. And you can do that through one, the womb naturally. And and yesterday we were praying. The Lord's bringing that back to my attention, Dr. Jerusalem, while we were on our prayer. And he showed me babies, a cluster of babies wow. in the chest of the women. And what did he begin to talk to me about? is the grief that is in the in the like almost the DNA in the yes. in, up on the women of uh, and that's the reason why he's been trying to oppress African American women as well as African women and women of color because they not only uh, have, have the capability of bruising the head of the enemy and crushing it. it, but also in the same time birthing forth men and birthing forth sons and birthing forth daughters, birthing forth people of out of every nation. And there's yes. probably not another people that know how to cry out from the depth parts of their being like African and African-American women. And so That's God right. wants to he heal women that have been bearing these grief and scars, and, and they've been disproportionately uh, in, in, in upon them because there's no way you could have a baby and not and see that baby just being born to be sold into slavery or to be never seen again one after the other and one after the other and and what the devil doesn't want is this word to go forward with the clarity and the in um and the understanding that we are pointing out see first yeah. of all in order for any product number one to have uh, 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 any any product has to have a market. We understand that, but that product has to also be in demand. So, and then there has to be a production of that product. So the babies came from who? They didn't come just off the trees out of the ground. So think right. about think about the horror. Think about the hostility that and the conditions that probably many of the women that were having babies after babies probably because of the SI. Some of the research has shown some of the kings and rulers, you know, were, were competing. You know, people compete for power. They compete for money. They compete for position. So the people are used, and women were used. We were used. 
and their bodies was used. And that's the reason when we look around the world today, and I even watch TV, and I, lately I've been watching and seeing how seemingly some other women and nations, they're just living life seemingly ease and materially things seem to be flowing and, you know, seem to be in abundance. That God wants us for these daughters, these daughters of Ethiopia descent, these daughters of African descent, these daughters, we must begin to bring out Dr. Jerusalem and cry out from the depth parts of our being today. The cry must go forth that the women come out of that grief, that we stand in agreement with the that because of what Jesus did on the cross for women, that his blood it has was shed when he went on the cross to and he said he bore our sickness and all of our diseases and he said that the mm, he bore our grief and our sorrow. So women, women from every nation, every nation, because women have been, uh, you know, mistreated in nations around the world, not just African, not just African American, but this cry is for women from every nation. But we also want to focus on the women that who bore children to just for the slave market, for the product that was in demand was for their sons and the sons who were 15 or more were sold for gunpowder. Do you not wonder that's why the guns have such a, a stronghold? They were sold for alcohol and liquor. Do you see in the cities they put up the billboards to attract you know, to, to, to continue to oppress our people and the men and the the prison system being that hole of hell and putting our sons in to co- hold them captive so that they will not come into their kingly place and position and become the husbands and marry the wives that God would have and bring forth the families and breed it in order. So the voice of freedom movement, Dr. Jerusalem, let's talk about that too, close. It's to break these strongholds. It's the admit it's not to put guilt and cause it to have a lasting effect, but it's to bring open up, as the Second Corinthians 4 says, uh, expose the hidden spiritual dishonesty. Things that happened were corrupt. They were evil. And those that were to have responsibility, what happened is you have to go back and identify entrances. So we're not trying to blast and, and do this. We want to be reconciled in, with our brothers in Africa and rulers and kings. But whether it was my father in the natural your father and the natural, your mother and so forth, what is evil is evil, and God has a proper way in which violations are to be handled and the blood is to be applied and we are to be redeemed from that. So one of the effects, like I said, is the women that are still crying out with those many scars and bruises and grief in our in our being, and I believe it causes black women not to care for themselves as they should, not to love ourselves and to think that we are the, not loved by our own men, beaded, bruised, and mistreated, uh, are not honored to all this. It has to come out in the very uh, in-depth parts of our psychic, our emotions, and our spirit. And so we want that emotional healing to come forth through the blood of Jesus. And so, Dr. Jerusalem, if you want to address that and pray for that, that's good. Okay, thank you. And forgive you hear the vacuum, so it's I hope it's not too disturbing. But yes, it's very important that we unite our voices. Women are being abused, uh, sexually assaulted, is uh, uh, on the rise, and especially in the motherland and in Iran, all over. It is uh, what they call gang rape. They're even raping elderly women. When I was in Kenya, I met a lady that had been I mean, viciously raped, and she was an elder by uh, a, a gang. So it is an assault that is uh, against the woman because we don't know our power. We don't really realize that we carry the Ark of the Covenant. We carry a tabernacle within our womb. It, sh- it should have never been broke into. It should have never been, I call it home invasion, home invasion that busted into your house, your, your tabernacle, and stole your goods. But it's our time to rise up and take back what the enemy has stole from us and realize the power that is in the woman that gives life and that much more abundantly. We carry something that no other uh, creation has carried. And so with that said, as we unite together in power, I believe that's why the enemy brings uh, separation between women and keep them fighting like cat fights. Because if we come together, we are a power force to be reckoned with. You see, we can really move and make things happen. So with that said, we want to encourage you to join us in the movement with the voice 
and sign the petition. Let your voice be heard on one accord in unity as God continues to give all of us uh, the direction as well as the one that he is calling to direct this and to lead the movement, and that's Dr. Bellman. So with that said, I think that's all I have to say at this time, Dr. Bellman. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruth, and she's such a powerful woman of God. And when she started sharing with me how Dr. Jerusalem, how God began to speak to you about this being the time. See, what a lot of people don't realize, we were looking at some of our numbers that people haven't come to our website, and they were way over a million people plus. Now, we need those signatures to, to not only just visit, you know, we read it, but we have, we have changed our petition focus so that people will feel more secure. So if you go to our website, www.vfnim.org, and complete your uh, petition, it is very secure. You will not be open to any other, um, you know, selling of your name, or it will not be given to anyone else. But we have changed it so that when you go and sign a petition, we are the ones that have ownership of our names, and it will not be uh, given to anyone else. We are using this to, number one, mobilize, as the Lord said in the summer, a people that will, one, mobilize a people for a movement. God said he wanted to bring his people from out of Egypt, if you will, as Moses did uh, with the children of Israel. And we let's, let's apply it to what we're talking about. In this country, you know, uh, when we came out of Africa, you, I say to people as, a, as, as just the kind of preparation in the thoughts and not to get stuck, you know, at what I'm saying or get stuck in the transport or get stuck in tradition or stuck on word. But let's look at the greater of, of, uh, opportunity from a spiritual standpoint. God said to, that he wanted restoration spiritually. It's not that we don't already have it because we're in Christ, but we have not walked in the fullness and the fullness of the grace. Because whenever Satan has something on you, as Revelation 12 says, Satan uses that. The Bible says in Revelation 12, Satan the accused of the brethren until he was cast down. Again, you say in that verse, he accuses the brethren day and night. And, and until he's cast down, Satan devours through accusation. He devours through taking those things that had violated God's commandment, like in Exodus 20, the Bible says uh, there should be no other gods before us. So first of all, there were worship of other gods. There was anything that is exalted above God. You might not be have carved out an idol. You might have not have been killing birds or cutting up animals and using their blood for sacrifices in, in this country. But what has been idols. We know that there are many things in the idols. Anything that you place more importance on or significance than God himself and worship, which is his word. So when you go to Exodus 20, it says, I want to take you to the 12th verse, Exodus 20, 12 says, this is the first commandment with promise. And I just want everyone that's on the line that even has a remote understanding of the relationship paternally as well as the relationship spiritually, and then thirdly, the commandment which was violated. So if you were torn from your mothers and fathers and the, those fathers and rulers who were in judiciary positions of power and authority, they are governing. They are sovereign in their rule of that particular country, that particular region, and they are given rights. They are given rights to protect you, to provide for you, to strengthen and to train and to help produce identity and wealth and profit. Now, those things were cut or denied those slaves that were sold from that country or captured from that country or taken from that country, whatever you want to say. Secondly, then there was a violation of the commandment of love. God said there's only two commandments that everything else is built on. Then thirdly, if sons and daughters and people were taken from fathers and mothers. They never had an opportunity to receive what? The, uh, even to honor their own parents or for their parents to bless them, even naturally. And then we come from that lacking blessing, disinherited, disenfranchised. So let's move it into the realm of the spirit. I'm not going to fight with it politically. I'm going to go with God, just like with Joseph. There, God gave it to you 15 years ago. Then just recently he told me to mobilize the people according to how Moses brought the children of Israel out and how Martin Luther King led the civil rights movement, which we're getting ready to come into the celebration of 
Martin Luther King's birthday, and then also the uh, February uh, meeting Black History Month. But we came into this country, and even the president, the sitting president, there has never been one that has stood up and honored and blessed the nation of African-American people, releasing on them the favor and the blessings through the decrees and the acceptance and so forth. But then the, the, the fact that President Obama stands both as a Kenyan and his father was a full but a Kenyan, his mother was white, he represents both continents, that is the bridging of the gap between the nations, but it will cause that strength. That's what you're talking about when even in Revelation 12, talk about how the um, – uh, and verse 6 that the woman fled in the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand years, 203 scores. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, uh, and the dragon fought against his angels and, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For the accused of the brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. What Dr. Jerusalem even talked about the wound, the woman, the women beginning to, one, cry out now for their own healing as well as the healing of their sons and daughters. Women, and in particular African-American women, have been crying for the salvation of their men and for their children, their sons, but they also have been neglected. And the enemy is trying to take us out and try to put up on us undeniable, incomprehensible oppression and pressure. And, you know, you're responsible for this and you're responsible for that. And there is a why to some of this stuff that God has given me by revelation. And you can tap into it by, one, becoming a part of this revolutionizing movement that will free people spiritually and restore some things that we have been disinherited from. And I don't care what anyone else tries to do if God said it in motion, a spiritual inheritance is at the crux of this movement, and it shall come to pass. We know that there has to be something that's done in the heavens that will be released in the earth spiritually that also will be granted this restoration of honor, blessings, and favor, and it shall come forth. And this is I know there's many things that are happening, but like with the Lord showing me, we have to storm the heavens, and we have to cause the forces that have blocked of disunity. See, see we, we, we look at it, well, it don't seem right. Well, what's in, it? what's in it for you is that things that are supernaturally been withheld, and this being that time that Dr. Jerusalem talked about of the 40th year, and this being the time of over 400 years since slavery in this country and spiritual things that have been released that cause you to feel reproach, cause us to be the hated, most hated people around the world. Why? Because Africans were sold almost on every continent of the world. So it's not just in, in America, but it has been under the in, in Arab nations, India, Spanish, many countries participated in the slave trade. And if you look around the world where they were sold, they also were under and still have been under the oppression of it because the spiritual inheritance piece of it has not been properly addressed. Dr. Jerusalem, you want to ask you that? I'm sorry. I missed that when I had you muted. I'm sorry. What, we, what was that last part you said? I said, Dr. Jerusalem, I was trying to say that how we were dispersed or, all, or sold by, by into slavery from the com first commercialization of of, of Anything, the com uh, African was sold as commodities, and there are certain spiritual strongholds and spiritual dynamics that nothing else can address except God, except the blood of Jesus. Absolutely, and and the and the issues that we uh, as a people had to carry and still do presently, which is a cross uh, that we have bore for the nations. It, it looked like it was just it wasn't for us. This land, America, was built on the blood of blood of the slaves, and we still have that. Uh, 
that those issues that's in our psyche, in our psycho, in our minds. You know, it, it goes from generations to generations. But the only way to break it, we can break it verbally, but we have to go in there again, like a Mary and Elizabeth with kit gloves, and begin to embrace each, each other. Is the way we're going to get our healing. Our healing is only going to come through bearing each other's cross. How are we going to bear each other's cross? We need to embrace each other and go. We need to go through the the, the birthing room of releasing the chains that have chained our mind and have chained our womb and set each other free. Then we can be liberated and move into the promised land as a wound, as an international wound, and as a people. Yes, so I agree. And that's the only way we're going to begin to capture again the honor and the respect is that we, as women, we must be healed. Dr. Ruth, I just sense we need to pray a prayer right now. Take a moment. Okay. There are so many women that are hurting, oh, man, and, and they're, they're just feeling the abuse, women from all over the world. So we want to pray, we want to pray a, a, where, a, a prayer uh, for the general populace of women from every nation. Yes. Then we want to come back and draw on that power as they join us. Join us, uh, those of you that we pray for that are from other nations, now that you're hearing us talk about the unique experience of African women and African American women, after we pray for you and your healing, would you please join us in praying for the African and African American women that the unusual uh, disgrace, the unusual uh, uh, grief, the, the, the oppression, the indignities that they have faced, and being the producers, if you will, of the, the assembly line for the birth of children that they knew that would be taken from them and sold around the world in eons and eons of, you know, miles and miles of distance away, never to even know if they ever lived or died crossing the transatlantic or going across the seas. So we want to pray, uh, Dr. Jerusalem, I'm going to let you lead in praying for the women as a whole from other nations as well. Okay, thank you. Father God, we come before you today and we thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness, your mercy. We thank you for making a deposit into the very wound of us by your word, the seed of the word that impregnated us with your spirit. We thank you that we are the carriers that you even entrusted us in safe keep with your word and your revelation. Now may we go full term now, God, and deliver it in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We come to an agreement with with heaven and earth today, the wound of heaven and the wound of earth, God, that we will move and shift even now, God, into the very divine purpose and plan of God, that the women of God will rise up in this hour and see the need and hear the cry of a national cry of our children that is crying out, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give us to understand the power that dwells within us. Give us to know that we have the keys, Father God, and you said it in Genesis in the beginning, and you set it in Revelations and the end. And so, God, let it be so in us as it is as it is in heaven. Let the healing begin, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let the movement begin. Let us move forth as we go into the delivery room and birth forth this new dimension on earth as it is in heaven. And we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory all the days of our life. And I send the word and decree that it is so. We'll break the hymen. We'll break the water right now. Loose now. In Jesus' name, and we give you praise, God. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Jesus. We get that to come to the close. I want to give instructions to those that are, you know, um, uh, just hearing around the world. I don't care where you are. You can sign the petition around the world. We want people from every nation. We are to lock arms together and be in one accord for this great move of God, because when one nation succeeds, when one person succeeds, all of us can succeed. Look at the great strength that has been displayed amongst African Americans. And if we've experienced so much indignities and shame and disgrace and all the things that have happened, how much more 
as we now get healed, see that you have to get healed of those things. They have to be a deliverance. Isaiah 53, 4, and 5 has to become a reality in you that Jesus bore my sicknesses. He bore the pains of rejection. He bore all the pains that of my children being taken from me or dying and getting killed and murdered. He, my son's going to prison and getting shot and by the police or killed by a neighbor, someone invading them. Whatever the issues are, we come compassionately in love in our hearts cry for you that the Isaiah 53, 4, and 5 and 1 Peter 2 will become a reality, a reality in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. Let the blood see. Envision yourself going to the cross. And, and envision yourself going to the cross right now and seeing that blood that streamed down uh, Jesus' uh, uh, body to flow in his head, to flow up on your head and your mind. Natural, you can't understand it in a natural, the, 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 the horror of the pain. You can't understand the atrocities that these women have suffered as African American and African women, but look to Jesus today and let's believe God that we will no longer succumb to the evils as Revelation 12 of the accused of the brother because we forgive. Hallelujah, God, we come into sin, God, we don't understand it. But we trust that as with Joseph, though they mean it for evil, you mean it for good. And this is our hour of restoration. So, God, we know without forgiveness, you said we cannot uh, please you. So, God, every person, king, ruler, husband, brother, um, person from every nation, uh, master, lord, the boat, uh, 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 foreman, whoever, all oh, managing whatever, the slave trade, the sell-off, the women that were held in captivity and hostage are forced upon and abused. We come as women today collectively from around the world, every nation, and we cry out to you, God Almighty, and we say, Lord, give us the grace as we come to the throne this day and look to you, God, and say, Father, forgive them as Jesus said when he hung on the cross, but they know not what they do, God. Forgive them, O oh God, for their evil. Forgive them for the wickedness. Forgive them to open us up to such degradation, such inhumanity, inhumane actions. We forgive all who participated, women, men, mothers, brothers, and sisters. But this is our moment, O oh God. This is our moment, O oh God, to say, God, we forgive, we release, we pardon. And now we receive the blood of Jesus, as he said in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says Jesus bore, as the Bible says, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet did we esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, that's breaking the law. He was bruised for our iniquities, that's sins that have never been repented of. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, let go of the torment, let go of the evil today. And with his stripes I decree and declare that you are healed, women. You are healed and set free in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you believe that, uh, just to say, Lord, I thank you and notify us, contact us. Amen. Well, Dr. Jerusalem, do you have anything that you would like to share before we close? Just in closing, um, first I want to just commend uh, the obedience of Dr. Velma and the confirmation of moving this forward because God chose you from the four corners of the earth in the beginning to do this and for us to be linked together. So thank you for reaching out to me. I know we've been in each other's path, but this was the appointed time, and I'm just honored to be a part of the movement. And I'm so thankful that you are as the national coordinator. And we have people really literally that are linking up from around the world. If those of you are listening or clicking on to the, um, the, the program and downloading it at www.worshipcenterradio.net, um, um, we want to encourage you to sign the petition to join on board. We will just want, we want to see a 150 or more signatures. The website again is www.bfnim.org and my email address is drbelmacrompton at yahoo.com. 
So let's drive this today to that website. Your, your signature is secure. Drive it. Drive it today. Call everyone you know. We're dealing with the time sensitive matter here, but it's going to cause major results to be released spiritually. And therefore, we thank you for joining with your host, Dr. Velma Poppins. Welcome, our guest. Thank you so much. And we want to invite you next Friday by God's grace to lead us again, hear from us, and we appreciate you being on board with the time of God's favor. And I am excited about what God is doing, Dr. Jerusa. Thank you to the Worship Center Network, call us to Dr. Roder, uh, Minister Juan, and Prophet Blaine, and all the others, and all the other hosts that have a radio program. Let's get on board and let's drive this to be one of the most um, the most memorable historical uh, movements to bring forth righteousness and to restore unity and dignity and to be blessed as we share together with clergy and take our places as those, you know, as those that are to dominate. So welcome again and thank you for joining us and we're leading for healing and deliverance. Amen. God bless you.